Hey there, we're here at the Microsoft Redmond campus. It's a balmy one degree Celsius. What's that, about 36 degrees, what do you call them? In the freedom units? Freedom 30, units. What's, 37 what's degrees, mean? maybe? <laughs> the Fahrenheit? It's freezing here. Freezing. But sunny and... Uh, Beautiful clear skies. And we're, well, I mean, we're really happy to be here. We're here for the uh, Microsoft MVP Summit. We're both Microsoft MVPs. I'm a MVP for a Surface. And uh, M365 and OneNote uh, is, is where I fall in, in that group. And there's about a thousand people here this yeah, week. In person. And another, a, another, another thousand, thousand online. Yeah. yeah, another thousand online dialing into sessions. So hybrid sessions, a lot of in person and remote sessions. So the MVP program, Matt, most valuable professional. professional. Yeah. So it's a, it's a community award that Microsoft gives out to people who do stuff like our YouTube videos online and other work that we do. Um, and it's a really cool program because we get to come along here once a year to Redmond and we get to meet the product teams, the people who actually make the products that we use. Products like OneNote and Surface and Windows and um, cool. it's kind of unbelievable access in a way. It is. Uh, like last night after the sessions we had a, a meet and greet with the OneNote product team and a number of the engineers and uh, product, uh, product managers were there yep, uh, yep. over a drink and a, a light meal. And I've got a similar one with the Surface team tonight so that's pretty cool. But what I wanted to talk to you today about is the uh, the tour that I did on Monday. Uh, I got here a little early and, and did a, a tour of Building 87. It's kind of famous within Microsoft circles anyway. There is a website for Building 87 actually, and I'll leave that link in the comments below. It's actually quite a cool website that explains what it is. And uh, basically what it is is uh, the D Microsoft Design Lab. Um, it's a kind of a secret building. It's pretty hard to get access into it. And in fact, to have the tour that we did on Monday, they, they had to really plan quite far in advance. It almost didn't happen. Um, but there's a lot of cleaning that needs to happen in this building because they make and design and prototype new products in this building. Um, I think this is my third tour of this building over the years, and I managed to sneak you in on one of those. Yeah, man, we yeah? did a tour of, um, just pre-pandemic in, in that lab. Yeah. It's pretty amazing to see the sorts of technology they're working on and trying and not all of it obviously makes the light of day or products yeah. because it's experimental. Yes, yeah, a lot of it does, right? So, you know, think about uh, products like the Surface Duo, which turns out to be a, an experiment that we all bought into, but uh, <laughs> it, um, you know, it, it, it was a really cool product, all designed in this lab, basically end to end from the concept through to the final production that went off to be manufactured. Um, certainly the Surface devices that we use were all designed there. Um, and Things like the accessibility tools as well that yep, we now true. have around uh, mouse yep. functions and button functions. I mean, they all come actually, from there. Actually, I'm glad you raised that because uh, there is actually a lab uh, that's separate in Building 86 just across the road actually, which is called the Inclusive Tech Lab. And I did a little bit of a tour of that as well. And I had a good chat to the guy that always leads the tours there, Solomon. Um, so uh, I'm going to get Solomon on to the channel at some point in the future. We'll do a Teams call That'll remotely. We won't yeah. fly to Redmond for that because it's about 20, 20 odd hours. hours of travel yeah. for us to do that. So we won't, won't be, uh, I won't be shooting across just to do that interview. But, um, but yeah, that's a really cool part as well. And um, so what they have in this building anyway to do all this, they've got these amazing 3D printers, probably $300,000 a piece. They've got a lot of them in there. <laughs> Um, and they can spin up, you know, something like an Xbox controller uh, overnight in full color, amazing detail, really cool sort of equipment. You've got CNC machines. Yeah, where they actually kind of mill out the chassis of a, a new Surface device, maybe see how it's going to fit together with the motherboard and, the, you know, internal changes they might be making. Um, they, I mean, I, one of the demos, one of the prototypes that they showed me there even had, like it was for the Surface Pro 9 5G and it even had the the uh, plastic inlays for the antennas in right. the CNC chassis. So some pretty sophisticated design work that they're doing there. They do things like laser etching and cutting. They've got all these amazing laser machines and cutting machines with, you know, I don't know, unfathomable technology. Um, and then textiles as well, things mm. like Alcantara, they experiment with colors and, and those sorts of things in there too. So, so, so colors, colors, materials, uh, you know, metals and, and, and shapes and yep. factors, but also sound. Yeah, and it sounds a really big part of it. In fact, so when we moved across from there, um, there's another part of it, which is the, um, the, the Human Factors Lab has things like ergonomics, so um, people who are studying the, you know, the, what's the average size of a human? What's the, you know, the difference between a, a thumb, my thumb versus the smallest thumb or, you know, the largest thumb in the scale of, you know, human differences. Yeah. They have, um, you know, they've taken 
thousands and thousands of full 3D high fidelity photographs of people, full bodies, heads, all those sorts of things so that they can do that kind of design work. But the sound part is the most interesting. The, um, I find it the most interesting anyway, the anechoic chamber. So Building 87 is famous because it has an anechoic chamber which is in the Guinness Book of Records as the quietest place on earth. 20.6 dBA. That beats the world record. I think we did it. You sure? Oh, I'm sure. This is fantastic. This is great. This is We're talking now probably about 60 decibels. The noise there in the construction site, this is the new Microsoft campus here, the noise in the construction site, they might float up to 90 to 100 decibels on site, they may be even over that. When you're in this space and they shut the door... It's a freaky space, it's, it's, it's a weird feeling. There's all sorts of weird feelings, and I had some different feelings this time that I had in the past. Okay. I remember when they shut the door last time, I felt like there was pressure in my ears like uh, like you were going down an elevator fast or like you're right. up in a plane. Yeah. You felt that. Uh, a lot of people feel, feel that. I didn't feel that this time, but I kind of felt dizzy. Okay. Over time, my, uh, what's that? Affects your balance. Yeah. Vestibular system, the balance was a little bit affected. I felt, yeah, a little bit dizzy, maybe because I was jet lagged as well. Probably. But, um, so they, they actually say, well, you know, the, the, I guess it's maybe it's a myth, who knows, but they kind of say that if you stay in this room, in this quiet space at that, quiet level of quietness for too long you'll go crazy uh, it freaks you out so um, so what they did is they shut the door for us there was about 10 of us in there they turned the lights off for 30 seconds and kept the door shut and it was such a long time it felt like ages um, really weird sensation and to what be... are you hearing by the end of that 30 seconds yeah well, the first thing I noticed is people's stomachs like you can actually hear people's stomachs going they're really noisy so you're hearing somebody across the room you know a bit gurgling, hungry for yeah. breakfast or whatever um, the gurgling going on uh, but eventually you can hear the ears the hairs move inside of your ears which is a really weird sensation but you certainly hear your heartbeat as well and and, and all those breathing people sounds breathing, so, yeah yeah so yeah really cool uh, and interesting experience now why why does Microsoft have this anechoic chamber they've actually got several of them here um, and they have them because sound is really important and I, I know it's really important to me and it's become more important since doing this lab tour as I've understood things like, you know, uh, voice codecs for calling, you know, the difference between a, a PSTN telephone line call yeah. versus a high definition mobile call between the same carrier to a Teams call, a Skype call, whatever other VoIP service you have and, and you know, understanding the difference between sound quality in those, sound. the quality of sound is really important something we'll talk more about on the channel but um, so to be able to design for that kind of that sound fidelity so the typical team's call going to be about 8k 8,000 Hertz of uh, frequencies that are broadcast across that so that microphone that goes into the surface for example those dual Farfield studio microphones we talk about all the time they need to be tuned to work really accurately to be able to reproduce the right frequencies and then when you add in factors like voice focus and, and other cool AI uh, powered stuff that's coming along in the surface range, you go, all right, I really understand now why sound is so important. And it's one of those factors that we just don't think about. Good sound is good sound and you don't really notice it, but you kind of, maybe you feel it more than you, you notice it if it's bad. I think you certainly notice sound when it's bad, yeah. when it's annoying, yeah. right? So that's... that's well, like the call when you go, all right, uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. What was that again? And you have to keep repeating yourself. Um, yeah, that experience, that's when you notice it. But typically, if it's good sound, you won't notice it. But it, it, just, it adds a lot to the experience. So even things like the sound of the product, you know, when you close the keyboard or when you... Um, oh, tapping the keys, for yeah, example. Tap, those, those tap the keys, yeah, that's the hinge right. mechanisms, all those sort of things. Yeah. yeah, the sound of all those things is important. It's all measured. And, and this is why they have this, you know, Microsoft have their own labs and their own scientists who are just working on this stuff all the time. So really amazing uh, tour and really cool experience. You know, hopefully people understand what goes into these products more. And, and even for us, the experience of being there and seeing this stuff helps us to, you know, I explain uh, what we're trying to teach people, what we're trying to talk about as well. So just wanted to share that experience today. We'll share some more experiences while we're here in Redmond uh, today and talk about the inclusive uh, te tech lab as well. Mm. 
um, some of the other things that we've heard in the sessions. Unfortunately, a lot of what we hear here at the MVP conference is... And the NDA, the current, yeah, not, we, not yet for public, it's all stuff that's coming in the future. We've signed a non-disclosure, so we'll try our best not to not disclose to anything <laughs> that uh, we've been told, but let me just say that there's some really exciting stuff coming along, it's certainly in the Surface world, but also in the whole Microsoft product world, so um, really good time to be here. Yeah.